welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we continue to study Ach Sandhi, Vowel Sandhi. Ach Sandhi means the Sandhi that takes place in place of an Ach or a Vowel. This Sandhi could be another Vowel or another consonant. There are two broad classifications of Ach Sandhi. On the screen we see mention of the second one, Dvisthanika Ekadesha. The first one is Ekasthanika Ekadesha, where you have Ekasthani and Ekadesha, one substituent and one substitute. There are two instances of this type of Ach Sandhi, namely Yan Sandhi and also Ayavayav Sandhi. Yan Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Ikoyanachi and Ayavayav Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Echo Yavayavaha. We have studied both these sutras in detail. We also studied the Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava in these sutras and so the number of substituents stated in this Sandhi operation in these two sutras. We also studied the template examples and then the specific examples illustrating the templates. After having studied the Ekasthanika Ekadesha type of Sandhi, we proceeded to study Dvisthanika Ekadesha, in which we have Dvi Sthani and Eka Adesha. There are two substituents and one substitute. This is stated by the Adhikara Sutra Ekah Purva Parayoho 6.184, which has got two words Ekaha and Purva Parayoho. Ekaha means one substitute, Purva Parayoho being 6 slash 2 of Purva Para, previous and latter, earlier and latter means in place of previous and latter sound. Put together, this sutra means one substitute takes place in place of two sounds, previous and latter. That is one substitute in place of two substituents. Diagrammatically, this is explained in this manner, where you have a plus B and we can describe this as A that comes immediately before B and B that comes immediately after A. So they both bracket each other and in the environment of each other then in place of both of them. <coughs> one substitute appears as a result of the application of one of the sutras stated in this particular section starting with 6184 onwards. So we have A plus B as the input and C as the output. A and B, these are the two sthanis or the substituents and C is the Eka Adesha or one substitute. This was not the case in Eka Sthanika Ekadesha where we have A plus B as the input 
and the output is C plus B. The instances of Dvisthanika Ekadesha are 5. The first one is Guna Sandhi stated by the Sutra Ad Gunaha 6187. The second one is Vriddhi Sandhi stated by the Sutra Vriddhi Rechi 6188. The third one is Pararupa Sandhi stated by the Sutra Engi Pararupam 6194 onwards. The fourth instance is Savarna Dirgha Sandhi stated by the Sutra Akas Savarne Dirghaha 61101 and this is what we are studying currently. And finally Urvarupa Sandhi stated by the Sutra Amipurvaha 61107 onwards. It is important to visit these fundamentals again and again so as to make them extremely clear. Let us now proceed to study the Savarna Dirgha Sandhi. This is stated by the Sutra Akas Savarne Dirghaha 61101. This Sutra we have studied previously. We also studied the concept of Savarna in the previous lecture. We also studied the examples, the template examples and then the specific examples as well. But let us look at Akasavarne Dirghaha once again for more clarity. Akasavarne Dirghaha has got three words, three padas. The first one is Akaha which is phi slash one of Ak is a pratyahara that takes into account the first two pratyahara sutras namely Ayun Roluk thereby capturing the five vowels stated therein namely A, E, U and Ru, Lu that is Ak. So Akaha means immediately after Ak immediately after a, e, u, ru and lu. The second word in the sutra is savarane, 7 slash 1 of savarana. Savarana is a homogeneous sound. Immediately before a homogeneous sound is the meaning of savarane. How to decide what is a savarana sound with reference to another sound? We have already studied this. Tulyasya Prayatnam Savaranam and Najjhalav, they define what is a Savarana. And in today's lecture, we are also going to see the exceptions of this definition. Dirghaha is the third word in the Sutra, which means a long substitute. The word Achi continues, which is 7 slash 1 of Ach. Ach means a vowel. Achi means immediately before a vowel or any vowel. Ekapurva Parayoho is the Adhigara, which is one substitute in place of two, namely previous and latter substituents. So, having put all these things together, we get the meaning of Akasavarne Dirghaha in the following manner immediately before a homogeneous vowel. Savarane Achi and immediately after Ak that is immediately after A, E, U, Ru and Lu Akaha in place of both of them Purva Parayoho place the long vowel as the one substitute. This is the meaning of Akas Savarane Dirghaha and I repeat immediately before a homogeneous vowel Savarane Achi and immediately after Ak Akaha, that is immediately after a, e, u, ru or lu, in place of both of them, Purva Parayoho plays the long vowel as the one substitute, ekaha. We have already seen 
how savarna is defined by the sutra tulyasya prayatnam savarnam as well as na jhalav and as i said a minute before in today's lecture we shall also study the exception to this definition we have already studied the examples where a followed by its savarna as is the input and long a is the output we also studied the specific examples of the templates like e followed by the varieties of e and the output is long e now in today's lecture we shall study these templates and their specific examples they involve u ru and lu remaining vowels in the ak pratyahar let us take them one by one and study the specific examples the first one is u plus u both short as input and 61101 applies and the output generated is long u so we have khalu plus ujjhati khalu and ujjhati they are independent words part of the sentence the speaker intends to utter these words in close proximity samhita so we have this short u over here at the end of this pada followed by u at the beginning of this pada they are in close proximity in the samhita mode and so and also this u is savarna with reference to this short u this is decided on the basis of the place of articulation as well as the effort of articulation which is similar so u is savarna with this u so in place of both these ukaras 61101 applies and substitutes one long u in place of two so we have khal u and chhati as the generated output when we join them together we get khalu jhati as the finished output khalu jhati this is an example where the ukaras appear in different padas as part of the sentence now let us take the other example where the ukaras they are part of one pada notably here a compound so laghu plus upaya laghu plus upaya this is a compound so laghu has got u at the end followed by u at the beginning of the word upaya since this is a samasa or compound samhita is obligatory and so in the samhita mode 61101 applies and generates the output in this format lag u and paya this u long replaces both short ukaras and so we get the final output namely laghu paya laghu paya another example of compound is anu plus udit anu has got u at the end followed by udit which has got u as the at the beginning since this is a compound the samhita is obligatory and therefore 61101 applies and generates the output in the form of an u and dit when they are joined together you get anudit anudit is stated afterwards this is also used to convey the idea of translated now anudit is an example where anu is a preverb or an upasarga and udit has got this u which is part of the verbal root vad and there is some prasaran that that has happened so this is part of the verbal root 
and therefore samhita is obligatory let us proceed further now we have short u plus long u as input and the resultant form is long u the dirgha so we have first two padas bahu plus urnoti so bahu has got this u at the end and urnoti has got the long u at the beginning the speaker intends to utter both these words in the samhita mode and once that is decided 61101 applies this long u is the savarna of this short u and so 61101 applies and generates the output in the form of b u and ranoti when we join them together we get bahurnoti as the output similarly you have khalu plus urjayati once again an example of the similar kind where you have u at the end of the first pad and long u at the beginning of the second pad and the speaker intends to utter these two words in close proximity that is samhita mode and so 61101 applies and generates the output in the form khal u urjayati when we join them together we get khalur jayati next we have an example of a compound so we have anu plus uh this is a compound in which the first word anu has got u at the end and the second word uh has got long u at the beginning because this is a compound samhita is obligatory and therefore now 61101 applies and generates the output in the form of an u and h when we join them together we get anu h let us now study the next template which is long u followed by short u 61101 applies and generates the output in the form long u so we have one example of a compound vadhu plus upayana vadhu plus upayana now you have long u at the end of the first pad followed by short u at the beginning of the second pad which is part of a compound since this is a samasa samhita is obligatory and we have 61101 applying and then generating the output in the form of vadh u and payana when we join them together we get vadhu payana it is important to remember here that long u appearing at the end of forms like guru or dhenu long us which denote dual number does not undergo this or any such sandhi operation i repeat long u appearing at the end of forms like guru 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 guravaha guru is dual form similarly dhenu 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 dhenavaha so these forms and similar forms which denote dual number so these forms do not undergo this operation or any such sandhi operation so long u in these forms retains its own form it remains by its nature that is prakriti and therefore this will be referred to as prakriti bhav we shall be studying this prakriti bhav later in this particular course the prakriti bhav is stated at latap pragriha achinityam and then the pragriha saudnya is defined by 
So the pragriha vowels, they remain in their own form. And what is a pragriha is stated in the sutra 1111 and then the other sutras onwards. In case of such pragriha sounds, there is no substitute, no sandhi. We have already studied the sutra Ulutap Pragriha Achinityam when we discussed about the substituents, namely the vowels, and we said that Plutas do not get modified. The Sutra Plutap Pragriha Achinityam says that Plutas do not get modified. They remain in their own Prakriti. So there is Prakriti Bhava. The same thing appears also with long E and the same thing also happens with long U both denoting the dual number. Idud Eth Dvivachanam Pragriham that is 1111 and that is why we do not have other examples of this particular template of this kind. Let us now proceed further and we have long U followed by long U as the input and the output is long U. So we have a compound chamu plus U. Chamu has got U at the end and U has got U at the beginning. Since this is a compound, 61101 applies and substitutes U long in place of both long U's. So the output generated is Cham U H Chamu H Chamu H. Now let us proceed to the examples where we have Ru vowel as input and the output is the long variety of vowel ru. First example is that of two words in the sentence netru plus rachati. Netru has got ru at the end and rachati has got ru at the beginning. The speaker intends to utter these two words in the close proximity samhita mode. And therefore now 61101 applies and generates the output where long ru is the substitute which replaces both short rukaras. So we have net plus ru and chati. We join them together and we get netru chati. Similarly, we have dhatru plus runa. This is the example of a compound, a samasa. We have dhatru plus runa and six one one zero one applies, and we get the substitute long ru in place of both the rukaras. And so we have dhat, ru and na and the output generated is dhatru na. Then we have ru followed by long ru. It must be admitted that we do not have typical word forms beginning with long ru. So we have to do with ru kar which is typically available. So we have kartru plus ru kar, where we have ru followed by long ru, they are savarnas and 61101 applies and replaces both of them with the long ru. So we have kart, ru and kar, that is kartru kar as the output. Then we have a long ru plus ru that is short and in place of both of them 
61101 applies and the substitute generated is long ru. So we have through long plus rukara. Through is a verbal root and somebody is imitating the utterance of this verbal root. Now this imitation because it is an imitation attains the status of pratipatika and then subanta and then it can be an input to this compound. So if you have to refer to the rukara of through let us say you will have this compound through plus rukara. And in this compound now you have long ru following followed by short ru. In this particular case because this is samasa or compound samhita is obligatory 61101 applies and the output generated is the ru kar that is through kar. Similar example would be through plus ru kar where we have long ru followed by long ru as input and the output generated is long ru. So through followed by ru kar the output generated after the application of 61101 is the ru and kar so through kar. There is not any other example to illustrate this particular sandhi except this. Now we go to loo plus loo both short vowels and the output is long ru because there is a vartika which says rulu varnayor mithas savarnyam vachyam. So they are savarnas and since loo does not have a long variety the long variety of ru appears as the substitute. So we have gamlu plus lukara. Gamlu is the mention of the verbal root gama in the dhatu patha and there is this imitation and because it is an imitation it attains the status of pratipadika and therefore a pada and therefore is an input to a compound and so we have gamlu plus lukara. Now in this case this lu is savarna with this lu and therefore 61101 applies and now substitutes the long vowel in place of both these lukaras. And here this vartika comes in handy and substitutes long ru in place of both lukaras. So we get gam ru karaha kara gam ru kara that is gam ru kara. Lu does not have a long variety. So long ru is the substitute in accordance with the above statement. Let us now look at one important topic in relation to the concept of savarna explained in the explanation of akas savarne dirghaha. We said that in this particular sutra the word achi continues from 6177 ikoyanachi. So what is the purpose of achi because if you have ak initially if you have ak followed by a savarna then obviously it is going to be another vowel. What is the need of achi continuing? This is a very deep question. The answer to this is provided by the tradition. The tradition says that although 1110 that is not jhalau negates the homogeneity between vowels and consonants, certain vowels and consonants do retain their homogeneity. This is due to the sequence in which the sutras get applied. And this is due to the interpretation of certain sutras following certain sequence of knowledge. So the knowledge that these sutras assume creates a particular mechanism in which certain vowels and consonants 
get omitted and they do retain their homogeneity. This process is called Jnana Krama and in this process the homogeneity of long vowels and the consonants does not get negated. This is very important. The homogeneity Savarnya of long vowels and consonants does not get negated. So for example, we have Kumari plus Shete. So here we have long E followed by Sh. If you look at the place of articulation of E, it is Talu. If you look at the effort of articulation of E, it is Vivruta. Now if you study the place of articulation of Sh, it is Talu and the effort of articulation of Sh is Vivruta. So in principle, the place of articulation and the effort of articulation of Sh and long E is the same. So if we apply Tulyasya Prayatnam Savaranam, E and Sh are Savaranas. But one would say that not Jalav would negate the Savarane between E and Sh. But the tradition precisely says that this does not happen because not Jalav negates the Savarane of only short E and Sh. Why? Because only short E is stated in the Pratyahara Sutra and not Jhalav negates the Savarnya of the vowels and consonants stated only in the Pratyahara Sutra. Those vowels which are not stated in the Pratyahara Sutra but get represented by the vowels mentioned in the Pratyahara Sutra, they are not taken into consideration by Nad Jhalav. So those vowels which are not directly stated in the Pratyahara Sutras, they do retain their Savarnya with the consonants. So in a nutshell, long E and Sh retain the Savarnya. So if they are Savarnas, and if we do not have the word achi in this sutra, then in place of e and sh, because they are homogeneous sounds, savarna sounds, the resultant substitute would be the dirgha, that is long e, and that would generate an undesired, unspoken form. And so, in order to avoid this problem, the tradition has continued the word achi and has solved the problem. So Kumari has got this long E which is Savarna with Sh alright. But this Sh is not Ach. We do not want any Savarna in this place. We want only a Savarna Ach over here. And Sh is not an Ach. And therefore 61101 does not apply over here. So the word achi specifies that the right hand environment should be a vowel, savarana vowel. And this is not the case over here. And therefore in this particular case the application of 61101 does not apply because sh is not a vowel even though it is savarna with long e. To summarize, we studied the remaining template examples of 61101 in this lecture. We also studied the specific examples that fill into these templates. These examples explain the process of Sandhi at different levels in between two padas as part of the sentence, so sentential sandhi or within a compound or within a upasarga and dhatu. Next we study remaining instance 
of Dvisthanika Ekadesha, namely Purvarupa Sandhi, stated by 61107 in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience.